Hello, Shabbat Shalom to those who observe, to those who do not, Shalom to you. Um, as I've promised, first and foremost, my father, that I would come here um, at least once a week to speak and give what it is you would want me to say. Because <clears throat> again, there's always a reason. <laughs> the father, and it's not in a, I've said this, but it's not in a a rude way. It's, it's a truth that Yahweh loves to talk. Um, he talks very frequently, very often, in many different ways. <clears throat> and you think that he's not talking to you, but he actually is, just in a way perhaps that you don't recognize or that you don't acknowledge or that you don't see. Um, but Yahweh is always talking. And so there's always something that can be said and something that can be communicated on his behalf. And so I'm back with just a simple reminder. Um, he he uh, felt that he wanted me to remind us of the power of words and the importance of words um, of words period um, and I don't plan to be very long it's just a, a, a simple reminder formalities out of the way my name is Gary Jean Baptiste I am a follower and disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ and I come here whenever I am instructed of him or of my father to do so and so <clears throat> I'm going to just pray first and foremost and then I'm going to start and again I won't be very long so uh, Father, I just come before you. I honor you, and I honor those, your children. It's an honor to be before you, and it's an honor to be before them. And so, Father, I yield this <clears throat> broadcast to you. Um, I, I ask that you give me the unction, the succinctness, the clarity to speak as I ought to, that the words that I say, ironically enough, will be received by your children in love and also that they receive them with the understanding with the clarity and with the revelation for those that don't know and again a reminder for those that do know father that they would um, know the importance of words and the the gift that you've given us as far as our creative as far as our tongues are concerned um and so father i thank you i yield myself and this broadcast to you i ask and i actually not ask i exercise my dominion over the broadcast and it's submitted to you and to your kingdom and shielded from any foreign interference for all is for your glory and for your honor in Jesus name amen and so um so words um words just looking at my notes sorry so words so they have um the power of words have the ability to um affect they have the ability to affect us and the world and the atmosphere around us and we ought to be wise um as far as the words that we speak sorry my back is just giving me a bit of issues um the words that we speak and the words that we receive <clears throat> into our hearts and so there's a very famous um, I thought it was actually an idiom. Um, a, 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 an idiom is like a saying or a phrase, um, but this is not actually that. It's from a children's rhyme. I didn't know that. And, of course, it's the very well-known rhyme that says, you know, sticks and stones may hurt my bones, but words would never hurt me. Um, basically saying that, you know, physical pain, physical trauma, excuse me, brings pain, but words don't bring such pain and so um this of course is not true uh but the purpose of this bracket isn't really to talk about the negative aspect specifically but just or more so the overall power a reminder of the power of words and the spiritual dynamics that words do have and that's really why i'm i, I feel like the lord wanted me to come on here to speak about this because the spiritual dynamic isn't spoken about enough and isn't grilled into our hearts enough we know, you know, the, 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 the general part of it as far as, uh, you know, words themselves and the effect they may have. But as far as the spiritual dynamic of it, we need to be reminded of it. And being reminded of it will help us to be more diligent um, with the words that we speak and the words that we receive. Amen. And so, now when I say words, I'm not simply speaking of uh, verbal words spoken from our mouths it can be written words um we know that uh, spoken words have a much more pronounced effect for reasons that i will get into shortly but 
I'm, when I say words overall, as far as their power, I'm referring to both written and verbal. And so I wanted to remind us and myself that words effectively are uh, seeds. Uh, seeds we must be careful of receiving into our hearts. For they have the power to enter our hearts and to change the way we think, act, and feel. Well, excuse me, change the way we feel, think, and thus act. I have that in my notes. I have to say it like that. So they, the words can change the way we um, feel, think, and thus act. Uh, so they change our emotions, our thought process, and thus can change the way we um, change our behaviors. Amen? So we must be very uh, careful of this truth and of the power of words. And so written words are seeds as well. I mean, um, as an example of this truth, of course, the effect of the very written word of God, the, the scriptures... And the effect that they can have on us simply by reading uh, the Word of God. We know that the Word of God is alive. It's active, um, sharper than a two-edged sword. You know, we know that the very... F I don't know why I don't have that scripture here, but it just came to my thoughts now. But that particular, um, you know, it's in Hebrews chapter... Call the chapter. Um, I don't know why I didn't put that one in there. Interesting. But it just came to me now. So... You know, we know that the, 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 that's in Hebrews that the word is active, sharp, sharper than any two-edged sword, um, dividing of the thoughts and tents of our hearts, and uh, dividing of bone and marrow, uh, bone and marrow. And so, we know that the effect that Scripture has, um, the written word, written words in general, have that same power as a spoken word. Now, conversely, many of us know the feeling of you know receiving a harsh text from an individual. Um, that we're in relationship with, um, and not even one that we're in a relationship, but one that, when the subject matter is of great concern or importance to us, if that particular text um, is contrary to the the subject or the, the contrary to what we would like, um, the effect that that text can have. An email, um, you know, looking at a past due phone bill, knowing that you don't have the money in that moment to pay that particular past due bill, and the effect that it has on it, just. Some people even have a, an anxiety of um, receiving a, a message or a letter from the government um, because of they know what what, in, what in, what's inside of it, right? So again, just as an example, things like that can bring about an anxiety, fear, uh, has an, have an adverse effect upon our thoughts and our feelings, our emotions, and then thus the way we behave. And so, um. So the written words have that have that uh, power as well. Um, Howbeit, many of the scriptures that I'm going to be referencing are the context of them are about verbal words spoken, um, and so verbal words, as I'm going to say now, carry a, a, a dynamic. Of course, that written words do not. Um, verbal words, of course, we know carry um, produce a sound. Um, produce a sound and more importantly carry a frequency um, a sound that actually is not is not is not invisible it may be it may appear visible to the naked eye but it actually is not the sound that is produced by our by anything really but in the context of what I'm saying by our by our words uh, they produce a sound a frequency you know that sound is measured um, in decibel, uh, decibels, as far as you know, the the, the how how loud or how um, decibels really measure amplitude. So how how loud or how quiet um, a sound or how I don't want to get too scientific, but basically how loud or how quiet the the sound is being transmitted, right? But the frequency is 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 a whole different story. And so um, the point is that the sound isn't invisible. It's quite tangible and it's actually measurable, as we know. And if something is measurable, that means that it's, it's tangible. Amen. If something is measurable, I'm going to say that one more time. If something is measurable, that means that it's tangible. If something is measurable, that means that it's tangible. And so, uh, it ha it's tangible. It me meaning it, it can be seen. It can be seen. It can be seen. Now, in its purest of forms, a sound really registers as waves. Or particles, amen. Um, 
in its purest of forms, but it is tangible and it can be seen <clears throat> and actually captured, which there are machines that we have now, devices in the in scientific world, they, they actually measure on a quantum level, meaning at an at, at atomic level where things can be measured. And so, you know, words, or sound rather, specifically, is tangible and can be measured and captured. And there are, again, devices that do that. Um, and that is why in my previous previous broadcast in regards to the, the, the dreamers, those that dream, that um, you have, that's why I was making the point of not only guarding our eye gates, but our ear gates as well, because um, sound, what we hear, carries a resonance, a frequency that's tangible. And so it, it and it's not like something that's, um, how could I say? It's not, you're not talking in metaphors. Like when you say, okay, be careful what you listen to because it, it enters into your brain. Um, it's, it's not a metaphor or something you're trying to, like a symb something symbolic. That's what I mean. Thank you, Lord. It's not something symbolic that you're saying when you say, oh, be careful what you listen to, be careful what you see because it enters in. It's actually literally a literal thing. Sound is, is tangible. And so it enters. There's a wave, a, a frequency, a sound that emits that enters in and registers and resonates within our bodies physically, tangibly. And so it's something that's not a metaphor. It's actually very literal. Um, there's a scientific part of it too, and a spiritual aspect of it as well. And so its sound is not tangible and it is measurable as, as is light, right? As is light. Light is a lot more easy to see with the natural eyes, of course. Um, some lights, they're not so easily visible. I'm not going to get into that necessarily, but the point is that it's measurable and it's tangible. And so these, this that's released from our mouths, and I've said this in different broadcasts um, before, um, as far as, uh, what was the other one that I did? Um, yes, uh, when you, as far as your your, your words that you speak, create an atmosphere around you and so forth and so on. And as far as oaths are concerned and vows, I mean, it's along those same lines, you know, but I felt a need to remind us of the power and not just, and that is why, again, why the Lord Jesus said that our idle words would be judged because even your idle words that you speak, they still, they, they carry creative power. Well, I'm kind of going ahead of myself, but they carry a frequency that is actually active, that's actually tangible and do have an effect on the world around us. And so that is why the Lord is making it very clear um, as far as judging and, and guarding what we say. And also, again, what we receive in our hearts from outside sources, <clears throat> excuse me. And so... Um, the first scripture I'm going to be using, and this, there's a, there's a whole lot of them, right? But just as a, I'm just going to, what I'm going to be doing for the rest of this broadcast is just to reference these scriptures and then kind of talk on what the Lord wanted me to say. And then that's pretty much it as far as what I'm going to be saying. And so uh, the first one is Genesis 1, 3. Of course, we know this one. Um, one of the most famous uh, uh, scriptures or quoted scriptures. And that's Genesis 3, Genesis 1, excuse me, 3, the Amplified Version. It reads, And God said, Let there be light, and there was light. And God said, Let there be light, and there was light. And so, we see here that Yahweh spoke and light came from his words. Now, there was a substance, again, as I mentioned, there's a substance to his words. Um, that created a tangible result. So there was a substance to his words, his, sorry, his words that created a tangible result. These words came from another realm, but had a tangible result in the physical realm. Amen? Those words came from another realm, but had a tangible manifest, manif manifested result in the natural world. And so we have, beloved, that same ability for uh I don't for um for they meaning uh the God had made us in his likeness and in their image and so because of that our words can also shape realities can also have an effect on both realms <clears throat> the spirit and in the natural and so 
You must be very aware of that. That is why declarations are so important. That is why um, uh, what was the other one? Declarations, proclamations um, are important and they have an effect <clears throat> on the atmosphere around it. That is why they're important. They release a frequency that is actually, again, tangible. And they have an effect in both the spirit and in the natural. And so... Let's make sure I have my notes here. Right. So we have that same ability. For bad or for good. <laughs> because of our fallen state. <laughs> for bad or for good. For positive reasons or for negative reasons. Unfortunately... And that is a lot of times where trauma comes in. And I don't know why, but I've been on a tangent as far as even later on. And I've asked, I've asked Yahweh and I said, Father, you know, why is it that I feel like this, um, but on this tangent or this, this theme of as far as healing, as far as trauma, as far as, um, you know, dealing with internal issues. And, uh, I know. I know that for me, I know that it's 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 part of preparation, um, and probably it's the heart of the Father as well. I know that He specifically has told me that He's doing a lot of uh, inner work <clears throat> in many of us in past seasons and even in now, because um, ultimately, again, we cannot get to where we're getting without dealing with our stuff. You know, we have to deal with our stuff. We have to deal with our stuff, and that's part of submission to the process. We have to deal with our stuff. I know we can't run away from it. My brother uh, in Christ uh, preached a message, and it was kind of in agreement with what I had posted on Facebook um, earlier in the week in regards to, um, even in, in the same relation to this in a way, as far as um, words, but more importantly, he was talking about confronting yourself, not blaming any, anybody else, but confronting yourself, confronting your own issues that you have, your, your weaknesses, your shortcomings, the sin nature that you have, stop blaming everybody else, blaming the situation, and actually confront these things and deal with your internal issues. And it was really spoken agreement to what my heart has been um, over the last, I'd say, several months over the last seasons is to really, for us as believers, to deal with our stuff, deal with the issues that we have. Don't run away from it. Don't get comfortable in them. Don't put them as trophies and say, okay, that's my pain. And my pain is, that's I hold this to a, a standard. This is the way I've known it. No, we have to deal with our stuff. These are things that are a hindrance to us, hindrance to our love walk, hindrance to our destinies, hindrance to the, the, the blessed, any, every aspect of our, our, our life. They are hindrances to, uh, and we must deal with them. And so, I don't know why I'm saying all that. That's not even really what, but I just felt the need to say it, that um, part of our destiny is dealing with those internal issues. And so um, I'm praying that all of us, again, continue to submit to our process and allow the Lord to show us <clears throat> and highlight those areas in us that need to be dealt with. Don't be in pride. Don't be in arrogance. And also don't be in, um, again, as I said, becoming comfortable and just say that's the way I am you know and I've said that several times that's a, that's, a, that's a trick of the adversary to say okay well that's the way I am that's not who you are you know you acting out of trauma out of wounds that's not who you are rather that's not who the Lord wants you to be and that's not who he created you to be a person who acts feels um, who thinks, acts, and feels solely based off trauma, solely based off of wounds and scars. That's not how the Lord intended for us to function. Amen. And so these things must be dealt with. So anyway, I don't know why I'm still, I'm, I went that way, but nonetheless. So the next scripture is Hebrews 11.3, and that's from the Amplified Version. Uh, and this is also a very well-known scripture. By faith, in brackets, that is, with an inherent trust and enduring confidence in the in the power, wisdom, and goodness of God, we understand that the worlds, the universe, were framed and created. And that's that's a whole lot of stuff right there. Framed and created. That's I mean, that's right there. That's why I like the amplified version. So in, in Brax it says formed, 
put in order and equipped for their intended purposes. Wow, that's just, that's awesome right there. So we understand that the worlds were framed and created. For, in brackets meaning formed, put in order, and equipped for their intended purpose by the word of God, so that what is seen was not made out of things which are invisible, which are visible. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I feel the anointing on that right there. So um, so this goes to what I'm saying before as far as um, um, Yahweh spoke these words from another realm and had a tangible result in the natural realm. Amen. It's, this is the confirmation of that. This is the validation of that. <clears throat> this is the, the, the scripture that would ref, that's referencing this truth in that. So what is seen, I'm going to read that scripture again, and I'm going to read the, the, the Passion Translation, because I like the way it says it as well. So it says, by faith, <clears throat> um, and I don't need to really, just read, really need to read the faith part again. Uh, we understand that the worlds, meaning the universe as a whole, and it says that the ages as well, the ages, meaning the time periods, were framed and created, praise the Lord, in brackets meaning formed, put in order, and equipped for their intended purpose by the word of God, so that what is seen was not made out of things which are visible. I mean, again, what jumps out at me is framed and created because we we have the ability, beloved, to frame our reality. When you, so the word frame, um, you know, when you, think, when you think about a picture, I should have had the definition here, but I don't. Uh, when you have, the, when they have the, the word frame, you can put in reference to a particular, um, um, to a picture, right? When you frame a picture, what does that mean? You have the image that's created, right? And you have the frame around it. What the frame does, it, it, um, how could I say? The frame gives it a sturdiness. It gives it a foundation. It gives it a structure from which the, the image can be presented as its best, as, as best as it can be. You know, using the picture of analysis, whenever you frame a picture, right? It's, it gives it, it gives it a, 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 a finishing foundational a touch to it it gives it structure it gives it um it even gives it adds to it as well right and so framing indicates a lot of times structure or foundation and that's why i love the when it says in brackets put in order because that's that's struck for me that speaks to structure and equipped for their intended purpose so equipped meaning it has the the gives it um the ability to function as it was intended to that is, that's just amazing right there. That really, really says a lot. I can end this broadcast on that alone. Because we have that same ability, beloved, to really do that. And again, for the negative or for the positive. And so, um, anyway, let me continue. So let me read the Passion Translation. So this is, again, Hebrews 11.3. Um, Faith empowers us to see that the universe was created and beautifully coordinated by the power of God's words, he spoke and the invisible realm gave birth to all that is seen. I love that translation too. So let me read that one more time. Faith empowers us to see that the universe was created and beautifully coordinated by the power of God's words. He spoke and the invisible realm gave birth to all that is seen. And that's basically what I said earlier. Um, and this is the passage translation to that. It's an amazing, I love that translation as well. And so, again, that speaks to, again, the ability to, to speak, all of us, to speak and then have an effect on both realms and tangibly manifest itself in the natural. Our words can do that. Our words can do that. That is why, actually, let me just not get ahead of myself. Let me go to the a reference that I'm going to say as I bring up the scripture for it. So, uh, the next scripture, Proverbs 18, uh, verse 21. Again, a very well-known scripture. Proverbs 18, 21, from the Amplified Version. And it reads, Death and life are in the power of the tongue. And those who love it and indulge it will eat its fruits and bear the consequence of their words. So we see here the, 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 the truth here about words um, carrying the power of death or life, depending on what you're speaking about, depending on your heart, what's proceeding from your mouth, your heart, because you know, the Lord Jesus Himself said that out of your, out of the heart, the mouth speaks, and so depending on your your heart, depending on what you're saying, 
it can either lead to death or life. And so this is not, again, a metaphor or symbolic language. This is literally saying that you have the power to speak life or death in your tongue. And not only that, but they carry a seed that, again here, that bears fruits in which you eat and bear the consequences of those fruits that you eat. And so that's what I'm saying. Words are seeds. Many of us know these truths, but again, I feel the need to remind us these words, words carry, the words are seeds in which can bear fruits, the fruits of which we eat and bear the consequences of. And so that's why we have to be very careful. Let's continue. The next scripture um, is, kind of, is similar, again, a, a very well known one. Um, James chapter 3, the Apostle James chapter 3, verses 6 and then 8 to 10. So I'm going to read these. Um, yeah, okay. So, and the tongue is in a sense a fire, the very world of injustice and unrighteousness. The tongue is set among our members as that which contaminates the entire body. That's very interesting. A small member that contaminates the entire body. So that's, that's, that's a lot there. So the part that I wanted to highlight here is, and sets on fire the course of our life. And in brackets in the Amplified, it says the cycle of man's existence. The cycle of man's existence. So many times we find ourselves in cycles or patterns of thought, of behavior, of seasons. Be not surprised or be not alarmed if it's from the very words that we have spoken over our, over ourselves. You know, there's a very term that says um, self-fulfilling prophecy or something like that, I think it says. Um, but anyway, be not surprised if you find yourself in cycles of, of, of seasons, of, of, of certain aspects of your life. Be not surprised, be not amazed if you can recall the words that you have spoken, inner vows that you have made. I don't know why that came to me. Inner vows that you have made. Oh, I'll never do this again, or this will never happen to me again. Again, for a positive thing or for a negative thing. Amen. You may think you saying, I'm never going to get, um, i got to be careful how I even say it right now. <laughs> But I'll never uh, say so you'll never do something again um, because of the fact that you failed in that area, in an example. And now you said that. So what that will do is create a fear in you that will produce <clears throat> seeds of fear. Saying something as simple as that or doubt. Um, seeds in regardless for which you will never be able to do that unless you... <clears throat> Change those words and thus change uh, the way that you think. Amen. And so the verses 8 to 10 of the same James 3. But no one can tame the human tongue, for it is a restless evil, undisciplined and unstable, full of deadly poison. With it we bless our Lord and Father, and with it we curse men. We have been made in the likeness of God. Out of the same mouth come both blessing and cursing. These things, my brothers, should not be this way. For we have a moral obligation to speak in a manner that reflects our fear of God and profound respect for his precepts. And so, again, we have the power to either bless or curse ourselves or others. And this is what I'm saying as far as our, need, our needness to be careful of what we say and what we receive um, in our hearts. Word curses are real. You know, that's that that's this is the so this let me just say this as well. Our ability, our innate ability to speak and and, and have an effect in both realms is not a a, a, a salvational um ability. I mean it's not it's not um distinct or it's not what's that word? It's not um I had it and I lost it. Uh it's not um Um, I guess it's not, I guess, exclusive to, um, that's not what the word I wanted. It was something more of, um, like, you, uh, like preferential, you know what I mean? Like, it's not something that's, uh, um, what's the word, Lord? Um, 
It's not, um, anyway, it'll come to me. It's not, uh, like, it, it's, 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 it's not simply something that uh, believers can function in. This is an innate, this, this is an innate ability that all, uh, all of mankind, regardless of whether you're a believer or not, can function in. That is why you have people who are involved in witchcraft, involved in the occult. They can speak, they can do incantations, they can do enchantments, they can do witchcraft, they can do voodoo, all manner of things where they speak words that have an effect in the spirit and in the natural for harm under the under the you know the influence of of the adversary um they can speak words and so it's an ability that is not again akin only to uh, believers this is an innate innate attribute that we have as human beings to speak and to give life or to bring or to bring death and so we must be very aware of that uh, proverbs 15:1 a soft and gentle and thoughtful answer turns away wrath, but harsh and painful and careless words stir up anger. So we see here that seeds that are from a good place, from a place of, excuse me, a place of um, a soft, a place of love that that exudes the, the the fruits of the spirit can bring about, it can actually diffuse, de-escalate, break up, uh, tear up, dismantle. A wrath or an atmosphere where wrath, where rage, where anger, where contention, where strife is is found. Oftentimes, you'll find when when somebody when there's an argument between two individuals and there's one that's um, very angry, very rageful, very wrathful, and one that, that keeps themselves in a cool disposition um, and responds in like way. Oftentimes, the situation de-escalates and goes down. But if you have one person yelling and the other person is triggered and reacts a certain way. And both of them are yelling with each other. Then obviously it, it gets to a point where that it escalates, right? And this is the thing that we must, again, that's an example of allowing seeds to trigger the change the way we ought to act, think, or feel. Amen. And so the, the last one that I have here is Matthew 4.4. 4. And this is the one, one of the most important ones, um, if you ask me. And, and this is, um, of course, the context of this particular scripture is when uh, Yeshua himself, the Lord Jesus, was confronted, tempted by the adversary to uh, turn stones into bread. And, let's, and people miss this, you know. Um, he wouldn't tempt him with something that he wouldn't be able to do, you know. Just, leave that, just put that out there. You know, he was fully capable of changing that stone to bread. And I'm just going to say that we as sons, we as children of God have that same, those same type of, um, you know, abilities, you know. I don't want to get into that too much, but when I'm led to talk about stuff like that, I will. But that's not, again, something that's only for Yeshua, for the Lord himself. That's something that all of those of us who are... Um, we have that same ability. Nonetheless, um, the Lord responded to him by saying, "He knew, obviously, he, <laughs> the adversary knew that the, the Lord can do this. Um, you, of course, you know, the Lord's response was, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes out of the mouth of God. Now, many ministers, many preachers like to use this word and use this scripture account and make it Applies to apply that he's, he's talking about the scriptures, the word of God itself. And we know that that's just simply not the case. You know, we know this by very, we, we know this by uh, myriads of ways that it's not referencing the Bible. When he's saying this, when he's saying that we're going to live by every word that comes from the mouth of God. The first point I wanted to make was that bread meaning a sustenance of life, meaning that Again, going back to the James reference that words can bring life. They can bring seeds that bring life. And so the words from our Father himself, amen, bring forth life as well. Sustaining life. And so the natural bread, natural sustenance, um, is, is we should not live by that alone. Amen. We should live by, there's life in the words that are spoken from our Father. An intimacy and relationship. Of course, from the Word of God too. But again, the context of what the Lord is saying here is not 
referencing scriptures, is referencing, and it's he said words that comes out of the mouth of God, meaning that there are pro, there are progressive words, the words that are going to continue continue on. The word of the scriptures as they are right now are are done. They're 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 already completed. And and furthermore, in these particular times, all that was there was no um, New Testament, no dispensation. There was the Old Testament. There was the Torah. And of course, we know that he could not have been referencing the Torah alone by this, by his response here. He was talking about words that come from our Father Himself, in relationship, <clears throat> words that bring life. And so that is what I wanted to end on. Really, is just to know that um, we have this ability to speak life and death, and we must ensure that we we receive our seeds first and foremost from our Father. In relationship with him um, again of course through the word we have it here it's available but not only by that <clears throat> uh, by a living breathing functioning relationship that's ongoing where he, sp he speaks to you and he can speak to you outside of the written word now of course he speaks um, the manner in which he speaks and this is how kind of I knew how the Lord spoke because the way the manners in which he speaks to me um, he uses the same kind of verbiage, the same kind of grammatical um, sentence structure, if that makes sense. The same way he speaks in Scripture, the same way it's recorded in Scripture, the same the words he uses, the way he formats sentences, is the same way he speaks to me personally. He uses that same kind of wording, um, using certain words, you know, like uh, using uh, for to transition a sentence, using the word for, or using ought to. I don't speak like that normally. I mean, no, but... That's the way he speaks to me. He uses those similar words like ought to and um, stuff like that. And so that's how I, by reading the word of God, that's how I became to know the language of how Yahweh speaks. And so the word of the word, the scriptures and stuff are very important. Amen. As far as us knowing his vocabulary, that's, well, thank you, Lord, his vocabulary. But that in of itself is not the only way in which he speaks. Amen. So the scriptures are there as a template, as a reference, as far as his vocabulary. And he may not even speak to you in, in that way. He may speak to you in a manner that you can understand. You know what I mean? He may not speak to you. He doesn't have to speak to you um, in the same word and diction, right? I know for my, um, one of the ministers that I grew up listening to, he says he's, he's Jamaican. And oftentimes, um, he knows, he, he would he would have trouble understanding the King James Version, right? Um and so he would read a lot of the other uh, translations. So when the when Yahweh speaks to him, he speaks to him in Jamaican. He speaks to him in Patois. Because that's the way he understands. You know what I'm saying? So it's not only, I'm not saying, okay, he only um, speaks in that way. I'm just saying for me personally, when I was trying to decipher the words, and I always say I'm, I was, I'm very pissed off that I was able to discern the voice of the adversary before I was able to discern the voice of my father. That, that always bothers me. But nonetheless, um, the... the the for me personally that's how he began to discern and decipher the voice of Yahweh is, is that he would speak to me in the same manner here words that I don't normally normally use in my vocabulary he would use when he's talking to me and so that's how I was able to distinguish his voice for me personally so but for anyway back to this particular pastor yeah he would speak to him in in Jamaican he's Jamaican he speak to him in Pat when it, you know when he's talking with him because that's the way he would understand because he's not very versed or he's not he doesn't very versed or doesn't really understand fully the King James um, wording and the diction and the way it's you know pronounced. So that doesn't mean he's less smart. It's just a matter of the the wording is not something that he 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 it's, is is um, easily received by him, right? So yeah, I always speak to him in patois. I speak to him in, in Jamaican, um, and that's how he gained he built his relationship with the Lord. and was able to release words and 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 flow in, in the prophetic, and so. Um, Okay, yeah, we don't. We, Yahweh cannot be limited. He can't be structured. Um, but I was just saying that as a testimony to me, as far as the point of the written word, uh, how it was important to me because that enabled me to uh, discern the voice of Yahweh for myself personally. So anyway, so in closing, just to say again that um, again, there's a there's a I mentioned this before. There's a a, a study that was done, and I want to reference it again because it's tremendously important. As a study that was done to um, show the effects of um, three plants, right? And one, this scientist, he spoke uh, kind words to one, 
nothing to another and bad words to another. And the results of that is very interesting. I've referenced this before. You can go on YouTube and find it yourself. The one that um, he spoke nice things to, it was flourishing, it grew, and it was healthy. The one that he spoke nothing to, it was very docile, very, um, just pretty much no change, really. The one that he spoke bad things to, it actually began to rotten, began to defile pretty badly, you know? Um, so again, that's to show that our voices carry a frequency that's measurable, it's tangible, and it can be seen um, on a quantum level. Um, it can be seen, and it's me it's measured, so it can be seen. So um, we must be very careful. Even again, are listening to certain music, certain things that we're listening to. They they music especially has the ability uh, to enter our hearts without our consent. You know, when words are spoken, as far as um, uh, you know, okay, you have an argument with somebody, and those words are spoken. You have the it may hurt, but you have the ability to um, to kind of filter them. Um, there's a bit of a uh, how could I word it, Lord? There's a there's you have there's a, there's a you can consciously deal with those seeds. Music, on the other hand, is a little different. Music has the ability to enter your heart without your permission, without you knowing. That is why subliminal messages are so effective in music. You know, rock and roll, and even in hip hop, they do a lot of backmasking and stuff like that. Backmasking is when you I don't really want to get into it, but again, just the, the, there are nefarious things that are done in music uh, to bring about subliminal messaging. Even um, as a, uh, a neutral example, as far as advertising, you notice that a lot of advertisements have songs, have tunes, have jingles. Um, that's purposely done. It's intentionally done. Those of you that don't know, commercials, um, um, there's a study that was done years ago in the 80s, old time, that they realized that if you advertise something with a song, um, it enters the mind without the person's permission and can um, bring back to their remembrance the product that was being sold. You may remember the jingle. I remember the Oscar Myers commercial. Uh, the, I don't really remember the commercial, but I remember the songs and the lyrics to it. Oscar Myers is an old brand of hot dogs they used to sell back in when I was younger. Um, Oscar Myers, did some of these songs uh, um, for toys that I always remembered. It was a jingle, and these jingles would enter your heart, enter your mind, and you'd beg your parents to get that particular toy. These advertisers know what they were doing. It's a, it's a what? It's obviously well known now. It wasn't so much known back in those days, but it's well known now, as far as advertising. They use jingles and so forth to um, allow these products to enter your heart, in which to sell these things and get you have a desire. Again, words have the power to change the way you think, feel, and thus act, and so you. Um, you have a, 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 a it, it can produce a seed which can birth a desire to want that particular product, amen. Especially if it's something that you're interested in to begin with, and so that's the practical example of it. There's a spiritual element of it again that music, especially, can enter you without your consent. And that's why you have to be careful with the music that we listen to. I can recite lyrics to songs that from like when I was 16, 15 years old. Hip-hop songs I used to listen to. I know every verse, every word spoken. Even now, I know them. But it took me years to learn uh, uh, chapter and verse for certain scriptures. You know what I mean? And that's a lot of times when I was trying to find myself in, in learning the Word of God, I would get audible audio um, versions of it because I know that... F I didn't know the reason behind it, but I understand it now. Well, not now, but I understand, I understand it later on in my years as far as audio, as far as hearing, as far as sound is concerned, um, that it has an effect on you. And so I was able to retain a lot of scripture and reference and chapters by listening to the word as far as as, as opposed to reading it for me personally. Uh, so that's what I began to do when I was in my you know early teens, in my 20s. I would listen to the word more than I would read it. Um, that helped me retain it a lot more, a lot better for me. Um, and so again going again going to the same point that you that you um that sound and particular music has that ability to to do that without you knowing and so god bless i pray that this was a good reminder for you to know your, the power of your words and the power of that words that you receive just to be very very careful about about that have a discerning mind a discerning heart 
you know, let uproot those seeds that you know were not, um, because you can uproot seeds. I'll say that you can very much so uproot seeds in the spirit. You can do so, you know, you can do that. As a son, as a child of God, you can do that. As a believer, you can do that. You can uproot seeds. And so I would admonish you to do that. Things that you know personally were spoken over you, you know. Oh, see, this brought back to my remembrance now. So I have to say it. You know, your parents said, oh, you'll never be any good. Curses that they've spoken over your life. Siblings have spoken over your life. Saying you're this, saying you're that, saying, you know, calling all manner of things. You, you got to break those curses, uproot those seeds, and forgive them. Again, forgive and let go. Don't carry offense in your heart towards these individuals. I'm uh, speaking to somebody in particular. You have someone that's very close to you. Family member. Family member. Who, who has spoken things over you. Um, and you agreed with it. And you've carried it for so long. The Lord says to let it go. Uproot those seeds. Break those curses and, and, and let them go. Someone, someone who's either listening to me right now or you're going to listen to me. The Lord is saying to let those things go. Uproot them. Could be your mother, could be your father, a sibling. Someone very close to you um, spoke some things. And it has affected you for most of your life. And has brought about trauma, brought about pain. And the Lord is saying to uproot those seeds. Come out of agreement with them because they are not true. That's not who you are. You're precious. You're loved in the sight of your Father. And you're special to Him. And so uproot those seeds. Get in the Word more and know what the Lord speaks over your life. Know what He has for you. You know, Jeremiah 29, 11. You know, I know the thoughts that I have <clears throat> towards you. Scriptures like that. Speak them out loud. And that's another thing, speaking the, the word of God out loud, um, Psalms out loud, um, has a tremendous effect um, as far as your atmosphere is concerned. And so, again, many of us know these things, but I feel I have to say it again for someone. Again, even if it's one person, I know that I've done my job. And so remember that, that speaking is one thing to read the word of God in scriptures, and another thing to speak it out. That is why a lot of people, when they pray, they oftentimes reference scripture. It's not to be fancy, not to... Well, there are some who do it because they want to sound fancy, but the, the primary reason for that is because you're speaking God's word back to him, but also you're referencing truth and you're speaking it out loud because, again, your, your, your voice has a sound, a frequency. When you're speaking something that's of the word, of God's word, whether it's a written form in the Logos or the Rhema, Rhema word, a spoken word, regardless, it has an effect and it can change a lot of stuff. And so... Um, that's why you, many people in ministry, they, they, they pray the word of God when they pray to Yahweh. Um, speak his word back to him. You know? So, anyway, shalom. God bless. Be mindful of the words that you speak. Mindful of the words that you receive. Uproot those seeds. And again, don't walk in any offense towards anyone. Forgive and let go. Don't allow the adversary to have a reason to accuse you before your father. He's accusing... I'm going to just say that. He's accusing, man. He wants to do... He, he, he's doing anything he can to prevent many of us from walking into our destiny. But it will not work. It will not work. It will not work. Don't let him have a reason to accuse you before your father. Don't let him have a reason to accuse you before your father. Don't carry unforgiveness. Don't carry offense to anyone. If you have to speak it out loud and say, I forgive such and such, such and such for doing this. I release them. Say it out loud. Speak it again. Going back. Maybe that's the reason why. Someone needs to speak out loud and say, I forgive this person for that, 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 and that. I release them that, 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 and that from whatever they've done to you. You need to speak it out loud. Even if you don't feel it at the time, you speak it out loud and say, I forgive this person for blank, 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 and blank. I release this person from blank, 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 and blank. You need to do that because the adversary is using that to accuse you. Wow.
Wow. Okay. The adversary is using that offense you have for this person to accuse you. He's doing it. He's using that. And it's, leg it's legitimate. Again, as I said, unforgiveness, offense are legitimate accusations that the adversary can bring before Yahweh on your behalf. And so you need to let that go. It's a hindrance. It's a blockage. Wow. There is somebody. <laughs> the adversary is using this unforgiveness in your heart towards this person to accuse you before Yahweh. And you have to, don't allow him to have that anymore. Once you do that, I'm telling you, your life's going to shift. It's going to shift. Whoever this is for, your life's going to shift tremendously. Trust me when I say, say it out loud. Say it. You may not feel it in your heart right away. Say it. Keep saying it. I forgive. I release this person. Father, give me a heart to love them. Say it. Keep saying it until the action. Eventually, as you say it, your heart will begin to soften. The hardness of your heart will begin to soften. And that legal accusation hanging over your head will no longer be there. Some people may say, oh, well, that's not, you know, that's fine. I'm just being obedient to saying what the Lord wants me to say. So I think I've been over my hour, so I'm going to wrap this up. So God bless. Please, whoever that's for, please forgive and let go. Don't allow him to keep using that to accuse you and thus to keep you from advancing into where, into the where the Father wants you to. So I just speak shalom. Shabbat shalom to those who observe, and I'll see you guys again next week. Who knows when? It's already almost end of February. I know this is this platform will be gone at the end of March. Um, again, moving on, moving forward. I know that I must continue to speak. That's not an excuse for me to say, oh, well, this particular platform is gone. So I don't have to do this anymore. No, I still have to do it. <laughs> I still have to do it. And so um, there will be other ways in which I can, can still obey my father and what he wants me to do. So many of you need to do the same thing. There are those of you who are not being obedient. You need to, your voice is needed. You're not being obedient. The Father is saying you need to obey. You're needed. You're needed. Anyway, shalom and God bless.